And uh, for the panel example, I mean, this is already like a pretty good setup. You can use a setup for anything you want to do. Now that you have all these separate surfaces, we can go back in and like change the resolution, right? And all the surfaces will adjust. It's a pretty good setup. For my example, I'm going to do something really dumb and simple. I'm just going to create um, a surface that pivots around two of its support points. Uh, so I'll kind of mock that up on the side here. I'm going to create a, a square surface. And I'm going to create two points at its corners just to show you what it is I want to do. And this is also a really useful way of working. Kind of mock something up, make sure it works, and then connect it to your whole data structure to apply it to everything in your model. So now what I want to do is I want to have the surface, and I want to be able to dynamically rotate it around that pivot that's defined by two points. Okay, pretty easy. So just to make sure this works in Grasshopper, I'm going to create some uh, geometry to reference in um, from Rhino. So I have my geometry node, set one geometry. I have this surface. I'm going to create two point containers. Here's one point. I'm just typing in point after double clicking on the canvas. And I'm going to reference the first point to the first one, the second point to the second one. And that's I think all the geometry I'll need. And now I'll test it out. And basically, how do I make this rotate around these points? Um, we can kind of go in and explore the tools that Grasshopper has. Uh, a lot of the transformation tools are in this transform uh, toolbar here in Euclidean is my rotates. And I think I want to use something like a rotate 3D, which is also in Rhino. So a lot of times you can kind of translate directly your workflows from Rhino. So I hit rotate 3D, it's asking me for my geometry to rotate. So I'll plug my geometry into there. It's asking me for the angle. And angles in Grasshopper by default are in radians. So you see here, 90 degrees is 0.5 pi. Since it's usually easier to work in uh, degrees, you can do that. And there's a really useful node in Grasshopper called radians, which will basically take a degree value and convert it into radians. So 180 is pi. So now this slider will control the amount of twisting. Um, so you can see already something's rotating, but it's not rotating the right way, right? Right now it's rotating by around the origin because the default direction is the z axis at the origin. So now we just want to adjust that axis. And here we have the center of rotation, and we have the axis of rotation. And we can get that information from our points. Basically, the center I'm going to set as one of these points. So now it's, can you guys see that? It's pivoting around that center, but it's still going the wrong direction. It's going in the z axis direction. To set an axis, um, I can create a vector or I can just use a line. Uh, so now what I want to do is I just want to create a line between these two points and use that as the axis of rotation. So I double click and I do line, and I want to do this line node. Not the line container, but the node, right? And this will allow me to pass in two points, and it'll just base generate a line between those points. And now I can pass that line into my axis, and that's my panel. I'm just gonna decrease the range of this slider so we have a little bit more control. I just wanna go from zero to 100 degrees. And I want to change this. If you double click on the slider, you can change its properties. I want to change this to a real number. So uh, this is an integer, so it's whole numbers. I want to change it to a real number with a few decimal points so I can have a smoother control over it. All right, so now I've kind of proven to myself that um, this panel will work just in this test case. Now I want to integrate this panel uh, with the rest of my model. So this is the kind of fundamental node that I want. So I just need to recreate uh, these inputs for all of my geometry, for all my panels. So I'm already in pretty good shape. Um, I have the points that are generating the panels, right? So I can get these two off-axis points from these containers. And I have my geometry of my panels itself. So I should be able to go through and just kind of re-plug everything back in. So for my geometry, I want to use my surfaces. 
So now the surfaces are being used, but they're all gonna start rotating around that first axis. So now I wanna change it to a local axis within each panel. And I can do that by referencing these points. So I can start plugging this in. This container will contain like the first corner point of each one, so I can plug that into the center of rotation. And now they're all rotating around their local points, but they're still rotating around the wrong axes, right? They're still using this axis to use the rotation. So to get the right axes, I need to use this line and just plug in the right points. So for the first point, I'm gonna get this point, and then the other one is gonna be one of these other points. I don't really know which one, but I can kind of just try it out and see. So here I've selected the two bottom points. So now it's rotating around the bottom line. Uh, that might be cool, not what I wanted, so I can just kind of go through until I get the right combination. So this looks like, this looks like what I wanted. You can see that all the kind of axis and all the geometry is getting generated, so you can make sure that you know you're doing it's doing what you want it to do. All right, and then I can just delete this geometry that I was just using as a, as a test. All right, so that's like a pretty basic idea of how you can use Grasshopper. Uh, to create dynamic forms and something that could respond to uh, environmental conditions or different other aspects of your project.